Hello everyone, my name is Garrett Anderjack. <clears throat> uh, for my creative essay, I wrote a story about uh, one of the biggest deer I've ever shot in my life. And uh, it's December 11th, the day I actually shot it four years ago. And I know the assignment deadline is today, but I figured, hey, why not relive the experience exactly four years later in the exact same spot. I'm actually out here in the deer blind. Um, so as I am going through this video, you'll see out there, that's where it all happened. Um, looking through the different windows. So this is where I've been talking about. <clears throat> Lobster claw, my dream in the making. In the winter of 2016, me and my family were not having much success in the deer woods. That was until we had one crazy snowstorm, and to say the least, things changed just a little bit. I am an avid outdoorsman, and to say I enjoy hunting would be an understatement. I love it. However, like I mentioned, things were not looking so promising that year. We usually have a big food plot to draw a deer in cold temperatures when they set in, and all the other crops start coming down around us. By the end of December, we have the only crop still standing. Deer are looking for good food source and we have it, therefore we are usually pretty successful. However, this winter was abnormally warm and crops were staying up a lot longer than normal and giving deer plenty of other options to eat. As far as any hopes of getting one of the three monster bucks we had on trail camera and now have all hanging on our wall in our house, it wasn't looking so bright. Then one afternoon on our way home from an indoor soccer game, we heard the radio man mentioned some cold weather and lots of snow in the forecast. That was December 10th. Later that night, the weatherman confirmed that there would be record lows into the low teens and snowfall of around eight inches that night into the next day. That is the definition of perfect when it comes to getting deer up on their feet and especially seeing big bucks in daylight. Usually the big ones stay hunkered down because they are smart and they want to avoid threats like hunters. However, when the weather gets that nasty, deer just can't resist. I can remember my dad looking at me and saying, this is gonna be perfect. I know I replied, the big bucks will be on their feet for sure, hopefully even lobster claw. That was the name I had given for a massive four and a half year old buck I had been targeting that season. He was only a six point with a very unique looking rat, which was sh shaped almost like a lobster claw, hence the name. That night, I went to bed with high hopes for the following day. For the most part, hunting at our place in the morning is relatively unsuccessful. Why? I have no idea. That's just the way it's always been. I slept until almost 11 a.m. that following day, which was December 11th. When I woke up, the ground was covered in a heavy layer of white, and you could hardly see a hundred feet because the snow was coming down so hard. It wasn't windy, just peaceful, heavy snowfall. That continued all afternoon, and I knew the evening would be good. As we geared up for the night's hunt, I remember praying to myself, Dear Lord, please help me get a shot at the big one. We walked to our blind, and the woods were silent. We could hear nothing but the faint, distant sound of the neighbor's dogs barking. Other than that, the woods were still, all but the snow coming down. We sat there for a couple hours, patiently waiting. At about five o'clock, I saw movement coming from as far back as I could see. One, then two, and then three deer trickled into our field, and soon there were 15, then 20, mostly yearlings, then does, and a few small bucks. Right on schedule. They ate at the beans and oats for about 20 minutes, it was dark at about 5.30, so I knew something had to happen quickly. <clears throat> at about 5.25, as far as I could see straining my eyes into the woods, I put up my binoculars and sure enough, I could make out his massive body coming my way. It's lobster claw, I said. In an excited voice, I could feel my whole body starting to shake. As he got closer and closer and closer, his massive body 
gracefully lumbered through the woods, and he entered the field about 50 yards away. I opened my window, raised my gun up, pulled back the hammer on my muzzleloader, and looked through the scope. It was like he was looking right at me. He almost hesitated for a minute, for what but it seemed like forever, at the edge of the field. I was nervous I wouldn't get my shot. My legal shooting time was ticking away. It was 6.28. He finally put his head down and almost trotted my way. He was, it was like he had seen something behind me because he was coming straight at me, 45 yards, 40, 35, 30, 25 yards. And all the while, he wasn't stopping. He was not in a good position for an ideal shot. However, I didn't have much of a choice. As he slowed and put his head up at 20 yards, I squeezed the trigger. Boom. Now, when I say 20 yards, I mean looking out this window. He was like right, right there, halfway in the middle of that opening. It was, it was crazy. He came from way back, way back in the woods as far as you can see. And he came and stopped at the edge of the field. We've actually got a, a water hole there. I don't know if you can see it. Um, about 50 yards out there. And then he stood there for a few minutes. Actually, there's a squirrel running by it right now. And then he started coming my way and he stopped. And that's when things happened. Boom! A plume of smoke left my gun barrel as a shot echoed through the woods. He went down, got up, and started running along with all the other deer leaving the field. It was a blur of white tails racing through the woods. I lost sight of him, but was confident I made a good shot. My dad and brother talked to me, asking if I felt confident, which I reluctantly responded, yes. Moments after the shot, I looked at my phone, and it was the last minute of shooting light. It took a few minutes to settle down, catch my breath, and gain some composure, which seemed nearly impossible. I had never shot a deer that big, and was hardly able to focus on putting my gear in the bag. We stopped out of the blind, the snow still coming down heavily. As we walked up to the place where I hit him, I could see bright red, what looked like little crystals littering the snow. It was like a red carpet. I instantly knew I made a good shot and started following the blood trail as fast at a fast walking pace. Not 50 yards later, I saw him piled up, laying up there against a small tree. I raced to put my hands on him. I was so excited. Both my dad and brother were congratulating. I pulled out my phone and called my mom right away to tell her what I had done. She was so happy for me. Then we all bowed our heads and prayed, thanking God for giving me the opportunity to harvest the deer and make a good ethical shot and keeping us all safe in the woods that evening. We took a number of pictures then went home, got the snowmobiles and retrieved my deer from the woods. Later on that night, I went to bed feeling quite accomplished with a big grin on my face. The next few days were filled with lots of excitement, exciting phone calls and running to and from with the deer to the processor, then to get it aged at the DNR, and finally the taxidermist. After all the commotion wore down, I can remember sitting there almost depressed, thinking, wow, that was cool, key word, was. It was almost like my whole life I had spent going crazy about getting a big deer, then I finally did. I felt accomplished, but that drive I once had was lost. And to this day, I feel still that still feel that way sometimes. Even looking back, that was now four years ago. Exactly four years from this day um, is when it all happened. He is on my wall in my dad's office in our house. Despite never being able to feel the exact same excitement I once celebrated over the monster, I still look up and admire him and think about the good memory he once gave me. It was a very exciting week for me, probably one of the most exciting periods of time in my life up until that point. It takes a long time to build up an exciting moment like that, and when it's done in an instant, it's crazy how an event can take place and then be over with even faster. However, those memories, despite the short-windedness, will be the ones that will stick with you and continue to think about and share for the rest of your life. 
And that's the story of me harvesting the biggest deer of mine to date, lobster claw. And like I said, thank you guys for all following and watching my journey.